In this video, I want to take a look at the negative binomial distribution. Now, you should be familiar with the idea of how we can use the binomial distribution to model the number of successes in a fixed number of trials. Now, let's say we want to find the number of trials needed to achieve a fixed number of successes, which we denote as R. This is where we can use the negative binomial distribution. Now, for successive trials, each with a fixed probability of success, which we denote as P, the number of trials needed to get our successes x can be modeled by the negative binomial distribution with the following probability function. Now it's unlikely you've seen this probability function before because as I mentioned this is the probability function for the negative binomial distribution. Now on the surface it might look a little bit challenging but it's not too bad. So just in case you don't recognize this notation here, this is n choose r notation. So we have x minus 1 choose r minus 1. We then times that by p to the power of r and then we times that by 1 minus p to the power of x minus r. And you don't have to worry about memorizing this result here. This is also given in the formula book. Okay. So let's look now at the notation used to represent a random variable which follows a negative binomial distribution. So the question that we ask ourselves now is how do we denote a random variable that follows a negative binomial distribution? Well, there isn't a standard notation for the negative binomial distribution, but you will typically see one of the following two things here. You'll either see x follows negative b here with the parameters of r and p, or you'll see x follows nb again with the parameters of r and p. nb here just meaning negative binomial. Okay. Throughout these videos and any kind of exam question that come up involving the negative binomial distribution, I will use this notation here, but this one here on the right is also fine as well. Okay. So to finish with then, let's just talk about the conditions required here for a negative binomial distribution. And the good news is you're already familiar with all three conditions here because they are the same three for a geometric distribution. So the outcome of each trial is independent. There are two possible outcomes for each trial, which we denote as success and failure. And then finally, the probability of success is the same for each trial. Okay, so like I said, these are the exact same as what we had for a geometric distribution. Okay, so that gives us everything that we need here then for our introduction here to the negative binomial distribution. Let's take a look now at some practice questions. So let's start off then with question one here. So for question one, we have the random variable x which follows a negative binomial distribution with parameters of 6 and 0 0.6. So for this question, nice and easy, all I want to do is find two probabilities here. So let's start then with part a. So for part a then, we're looking for the probability that x equals 8. So to calculate this probability here, we need to use the following result. So the probability that our random variable x here is equal to some value, let's call this little x here, is equal to them. So we have x minus 1, choose r minus 1, we then times this by p to the power of r, and then we times this here by 1 minus p, to the power of x minus r. Okay, like so. So for our distribution here for this random variable x, in this case, r equals 6, p is equal to 0 0.6. So then for part a, x equals 8, that's this value here. So x equals 8. And then for part b, x will equal 12. Okay. So let's start then with part A, so the probability that x equals 8. So in that case, then just putting all of this together here with these values. So the probability that x equals 8. So this will be, so it's going to be x minus 1, so that's going to be 8 minus 1. So 8 minus 1. Then we choose r minus 1, where r is equal to 6, so 6 minus 1. Then we times this by p to the power of r. So p is 0 0.6. So we times it by 0 0.6 to the power of r, which is 6. And then we times it by 1 minus p. So 1 minus 0 0.6 to the power of x minus r. So that's 8 minus 6 there. Okay. So we put all this together then. We're going to get 7, choose 5. So 7, choose 5. We then times that by 0.6 to the power of 6. So 0.6 to the power of 6. 
and then we times this by 0.4 to the power of 2. Okay, and clearly to evaluate this here, you're going to have to use your calculator. But if you do this correctly, then what you should find here for the probability that x equals 8 is we get 0 0.157. So 0 0.157 there. Okay, so hopefully not too challenging there just to get us started. So that's part A. Now for part B, pretty much identical. The only thing that's going to change now is this value of x here. Okay, so for part B then, now for the probability that x equals 12. Okay, just using this result again then, um, obviously now just changing the value of x here. So what do we get then? Well, I get 12 minus 1, choose r minus 1, where this would be 6 minus 1 again. So we get 12 minus 1, choose 6 minus 1. We then times this by p to the power of r. So again, times it by 0 0.6 to the power of 6. And then again, we times this by 1 minus 0 0.6 to the power now. So remember, it's x minus r. So x in this case is 12. So we do 12 minus 6 here. Okay, so 12 minus 6 there. So we simplify this here. Well, I get 11 choose 5. So 11 choose 5. We then times this by 0 0.6 to the power of 6. And then finally, we times this by 0 0.4 to the power of 6. Okay. Right, so... And again, clearly to evaluate this here, you're going to have to use your calculator. And if you do this correctly then, what you should get here for the probability that x equals 12 is we get 0 0.0, so 0, 0.0 here, A83. Okay, so A83 A, there. Okay. And there we have it. So that gives us the solution there to question one. So let's just take a look then at one more question here. So we have question two and we have Tom who throws a fair six-sided dice. So for this question here, again, pretty straightforward. All I want to do is find two probabilities. So for the first part then, we're looking for the probability of throwing a six for the second time on the fifth throw. So let's start then with part A. Now before we even look at finding any probabilities here, the first thing that we should do is choose a random variable and define that random variable to model this situation here. Okay, so if I choose x as my random variable here, x will follow a negative binomial distribution. So negative b, so this represents a negative binomial distribution, and then we also need our parameters here. So we have r, this is the number of successes required. So for part a then, well we're looking for the probability of throwing a 6 for the second time. So that part is important here because that indicates we need two successes. So r equals 2. And then for the second parameter here, this is p. And that indicates the probability of success. So in this case, then, if we have a fair six-sided dice, p would be equal to 1 over 6. Okay. So what we're actually looking for here, then, is the probability that x equals 5. Because we're looking for the fifth row. Okay. So we need the probability that x equals 5. Okay, so to find this here, again, pretty straightforward, just simply using the result that we've seen on the previous question and within the introduction here within this video. So it's going to be x minus 1, so that's going to be 5 minus 1. Then we choose r minus 1, so r in this um, example here is 2. So 5 minus 1, choose 2 minus 1. We then times this by p to the power of r. So we times this by p, which is 1 over 6 to the power of r, which is 2, so 1 over 6 squared there. And then we times this here by 1 minus p, so 1 minus 1 over 6, to the power of x minus r. So x here is 5 minus r, which is 2. Okay, so we simplify this here. We get 4 choose 1. So 4 choose 1, and we times that by 1 over 6 squared. And then we times that by um, 1 minus 1 over 6 is 5 over 6. We times that by 5 over 6 to the power of 3 here. Okay. And clearly to evaluate this, you're going to have to use your calculator. But if you do this correctly, then what you should find here for the probability that x equals 5 is we get 0.0. So 0.06 
four three there. Okay. And there we have it. So that is the solution to part A. Now for part B then. We want to find the probability of throwing a 6 for the second time on the fifth throw, given that the first throw was a 6. Right, so to find part B here, I'm going to choose now a new random variable to model the situation for part B. So if we think about this now for part B, technically we can basically just ignore this first throw here, okay, and start again then with four remaining throws, okay. So now if I choose y here as my um, random verbal, y will follow a negative binomial distribution. So negative b again. So now we need our parameters here. So we're only looking for two successes initially. However, we've already got one of those. We got it on the first throw. So now I need one success because we've already got one of those successes. So I need one success. And again, the probability of success won't change here because again, it's just a fair six-sided die. So p is equal to one over six, okay? Now for the probability that we're looking to find here, just be slightly careful then. So in this case, it would be the probability that y, because that's our new random variable here, is equal to four, okay? Rather than five, because we're essentially just ignoring the first throw, okay? So in that case, then we're gonna simply use this result again, but obviously just applying that to this random variable. So in that case, then we get four minus one, choose 1 minus 1, then we times this by p to the power of r, so 1 over 6 to the power of r, which is 1 in this case, and then we times this here by, so it's 1 minus 1 over 6 to the power then of x minus r, so that's 4 minus 1 here, like so. So if we simplify this here then, what do we get? Well, we're going to get 3, choose 0, so 3, choose 0. Um, we then get, well, we times it by 1 over 6 because it's to the power of 1. So we times it by 1 over 6. And then we times this here by 5 over 6 to the power of 3. Okay. So 5 over 6 to the power of 3. So again, to evaluate this here, just use your calculator. And if you do this correctly then and give this to a sensible degree of accuracy, what we get here is 0.0. .0 nine six five there okay and there we have it. it's like because the solution to part b and the solution to the very last question question two and that brings us to the end of this video on the negative binomial distribution